Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Aisha Zaman Khan and I am a fourth year panel student. I specialize in both linguistics and also literature. So in this video, I will be talking a bit about my experience with um, FYP1 and my experience before and while doing my FYP. Um, first off, do not panic if you don't have any supervisor in mind or if you don't have any topic in mind yet. A few months ago, prior to um, doing my research, I panicked way too much because I missed out on the first workshop, FYP workshop. So because I missed out on the first workshop, I was already panicking. I remember that um, when I attended the second workshop, I felt as if I was still so lost. And so I went to this one senior that I know. She She's actually my friend, but she also happened to be a, a senior. I told her that um, I was really worried about not knowing what to do or who to go to, you know, to ask about my FYP. And she said, if you have yet to, to you know, pick a supervisor, just, you know, think of a few lectures you have in mind who you know can push you to do work or you know are a bit stern. Second of all, if you don't have a topic yet, do not worry about that as well. I think I worried so much about, you know, choosing like a topic. Mind you that even if you have found a supervisor and you have already, you know, proposed a few topics, that the topics that you have proposed may change or they may see that they're not, uh, the topics are not, you know, good enough for, or they're not suitable or they're not relevant. So the topics may change. Um, for example, for myself, um, a few months ago, I, I didn't really, you know, have like a like a solid topic that I wanted to work on. But the thing is, I've always had this passion or, or interest in feminism. So I knew that I wanted to work thing along the lines of feminism. Um, but my topics weren't like solid or they, they, they weren't strong. They weren't really structured well. Uh, but I had a few a few topics in mind. Obviously, I, I, I looked up um, on the internet like topics that I could work on related to feminism as well as English. Uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is to pick what you think you can work best with, if that makes sense. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, when you're choosing literature or linguistics. And um, I knew for a fact that I was always that I've always been interested in um, literature uh, because I like analyzing uh, works. I think that's just something that I have always been interested in. So I knew that I was going to focus on literature and that um, I wanted to work on something that has got to do with feminism. So I had those two things in mind when I was about to structure my topics. Uh, they were not solid topics. I remember, I think I list about three. Remember to come up with more than three topics if, if possible, three minimum because if they reject one or two topics, then at least you have a backup. Uh, but make sure that you're interested in all equally. And the other thing I would say is, uh, once you have uh, you know, worked out who your supervisor is, you have your, your topic, uh, it's important to always, always, always consult. And I think this is the thing that I want to you know, stress on a lot because um, I have had friends who struggle a lot uh, until the the last week of first semester of our fourth year, I think um, like a few of my friends struggled a lot with their FYP1 because of the lack of consultation. And like I've mentioned before, I am not a smart student. So I think what helped me a lot was the amount of consultations I had with my supervisor. Because once you have your draft, if you don't consult, you don't really know where you can improve. So the use of consultations are for your supervisor, to see where you can improve or, or what, what what corrections you can do to improve. Um, for my supervisor, he is, I think, as concerned as we are with our FYP. And to have someone who is equally concerned as you are with your work is something to be grateful for. Because um, I have friends who, who would come to me and, and, you know, complain how their supervisors aren't really, you know, pushing them to do any work. And some also told me that uh, their supervisors are, are not really discussing anything or not really briefing like on anything that they have to do. And so they were lost for like the first few weeks. And to remember that your supervisors are your supervisors. Uh, they're not supposed to be the one doing the work for you. You have to put in the work and they can, you know, help you polish the work that you have constructed. And I feel like a lot of my friends or my peers who are doing their FYP 
most of them are so afraid of their supervisors they're afraid of, of, of feedbacks because they know that their works won't be enough but that's the thing about consultations that's the point of consultations. The reason why you want to have consultations with your supervisor is for them to, you know, check your work and see where you can improve your work or your paper. I actually had a few breakdowns while writing my <laughs> a few breakdowns while writing my FYP. And it's not because my supervisor was strict or stern. It was because I wanted to do better. And like I said, even if you have like 20 pages ready, it does not mean that those 20 pages will be enough or relevant. Hence why you would need consultations. Again, I cannot stress this enough. Consultations are so, so, so important. Um, if you want to do well, uh, then you would have to constantly have consultations. And consultations does not only mean the weekly meetings that you have with your other classmates in under the same supervisor, but consultations would mean individual consultation so you would go to your supervisor and say um so and so can i please have a consultation this evening or tomorrow try to set a time with your supervisor where you can with a few other friends you know just come by to your office and and work out what you can improve in your work and one other thing i would also say is if you have written your draft you always check your language and this is something my supervisor um uh stressed on if you know that you struggle a lot with grammar or if you know that your work is not grammatically correct monitor your language um, in your draft i struggled a lot with this um, even though i can speak english i think proficiently my writing is not good um, i do make grammar mistakes here and there and i think that is one of the things that you should focus on if you want to consult with your uh, supervisors, make sure you check your language. Um, now, this is the, the the good thing about you know having friends in the same group under the same supervisor. You can go to your friend and exchange your paper and ask each other to just read over your, your draft uh, just to make sure that there aren't any errors because if the content of, of, of your paper is not relevant, that's one problem. But the other problem that may occur is that your supervisor would get extreme headache so i would suggest to at least you know even if your content is not perfect at least your grammar or your language should be readable try not to make a lot of mistakes uh, and so for you to not make a lot of mistakes you would exchange your work with other people or it, it could be anyone who you think are able to you know help you out with language and then you can send your draft to your supervisor so that would be another uh tip that I would give. One more thing that I want to stress on would be you will always have to, you know, constantly uh, improve your paper. Even if you have finished the first semester of your fourth year, you would still need to fix your first FYP during your second FYP, which means that the marks you get uh, during FYP one is not fixed. Uh, so you can always improve um, in the coming semester but but just because you know that you can improve your your first paper uh, during the second semester that does not mean that you do your FYP one recklessly I guess one of the last things that I want to say is to not overwork yourself and to not um, underestimate yourself as someone who, who struggles a lot with self-doubt <laughs> I always constantly compare myself with, with like other students who are in the dean's list. Uh, mind you, I'm not a dean's list student. I only start realizing the importance of, of uh, my grades, I think, during my third year, which is a bit late. But um, it's important to remember that even if you are not a dean's list student, you can work hard and get an A for your FYP. For, for me to be on I guess the same level as they are you you have to willingly want to be better that's one consultation is one more thing I know you're probably tired of that but consultations are are extremely important and yeah I think that is all
everyone. Hi everyone. My name is Marisol Fabentio Manasse, major number one eight one five one three six, and I'm a fourth year second semester student, which is currently uh I'm currently doing FIP FIP two under the supervision of Dr. Homam. So the title of my FIP is the representation of Muslims in William Shakespeare Shakespeare's Othello, which is basically a contextual study that explore uh social, historical, and political settings of uh Elizabethan era. Uh, which then I focus on the character analysis of Othello in order to understand the representation of Muslims in Western writing during the era. So the theory, theory that I adopted for my FIP is post-colonialism, which primarily uh, includes Orientalism. So to be honest, I don't think that I'm good or qualified enough for this video, but I'll try my best to share the experience or like probably like the tips uh, that I get from my encounter with a happy one last semester, hoping that it can benefit you in any ways that it could. So before we get started, I want to clarify that I'm doing uh, FIP focusing in literature. So for those who want to explore or uh, thinking of doing linguistics, this might not apply to you. Uh, okay, my first tip is that you need to choose a topic that you really love and enjoy. Because if I were to be uh, completely honest, the journey to complete your FIP is very, it's going to be very mentally and physically draining. It's going to be very stressful. Uh, in, if I were to put it in a metaphor, it's like battling the whole demons inside of you. So if you end up choosing a topic that you don't really enjoy doing, a topic that you choose uh, half-heartedly just because FIP is an obligation for you to graduate, uh, it's going to add like, like a more stress and negative feelings to it. So for instance, I remember that I really enjoyed uh, my Shakespeare's class in in second semester in my second year. Uh, so I choose I chose one of the one of his best tragedies to explore and write on about. So it did help me to like have a uh, positive relationship with my FIP overall. So yeah, choose the best topic that you really like. Uh, also, I remember when I attended a uh, happy briefing uh, at the at, at early of the semester. I remember hearing uh, things like wh when you choose a topic, do not be too ambitious. Uh, choose a topic that has been explored vastly. I wouldn't say it's vastly. I mean, like, is uh, choose a topic that has a uh, lot of resources and previous studies that you can. Uh, refer to because uh, the previous studies uh, you can like like you can have like a clear picture of what you want to explore and as a mean in FIP from these previous studies as well uh, it will not only help to generate the ideas for your FIP but then uh, you can also see the loopholes or the missing things from your from from their studies so that is going to be helpful for you to come up with the significance of your study and also to, for you to write a literature gap for your chapter 2. Uh, next, speaking of chapter 2, uh, which is going to include the uh, literature review and literature gap. Uh, literature review, uh, like the second chapter is going to take almost half of the pages in your FIB1. So you're going to end up spending most of your time in this section because uh, mainly because you have first, you have like lots of readings to do and also to search for the best resources that you can refer to. So when it comes to writing your uh, second chapter, my advice is that for you to have like a clear outline of the points and also the sub points that you want to include uh, in your uh, literature, literature review said during the course of writing it, you don't steer away from your topic, from your points, and also for you to do not, for you to not get too overwhelmed. So, under each points and sub points, you might want to list down uh, the articles or the books, all your ideas, your arguments regarding uh, the section, so that you don't forget and you can always like get a clear picture of what you want to write after that. So uh, also, uh, when looking for the best resources for you to refer, for you to read, uh, always use credible sources from distinguished publications because I remember my supervisor being very particular about this. Um, the next point is going to be about theoretical framework, which is also one of the sections that I struggled the most uh, because uh, you need to choose the suitable theory that, that, that will be adopted in your analysis chapter in your FIP2 later. So my advice is that 
to always refer and ask help from your supervisors as they know better and they know uh, best than any of us. So speaking of supervisor, I could not stress this much enough, but communications with your supervisor is so, so important. So in order for them to help you, uh, you need to reach out to them uh, first because your supervisor is more than happy to help and also to accommodate you with the expertise and the experience. So it is better to discuss uh, and come from come for consultation regularly and let them know if you are struggling or facing any difficult difficulties uh, when writing your FIP. So I do not want to extend this video any longer but uh, my final tip is that it's gonna sound ironic because I am too guilty of procrastination but really speaking from my experience you might like you cannot or you do not want to procrastinate for too long. If I were to be honest I started up I started out uh, quite a bit late as well. Uh, I think it was in week 6 uh, or probably week 7. Uh, I realized that uh, there is, when we procrastinate, we will get the urge, the sense or the need to finish uh, quickly before the deadline. So when, when we do that, it's going to jeopardize the quality of our work and also, and of course, your grade. And when you submit your final submission, uh, you you you're gonna have like this sense of feelings that you I know I could have done this better so uh, when you started early and submitted or show your draft to your supervisors multiple multiple time before the submission your supervisor would have like more time to comment on the parts that needs more clarification parts that needs more elaboration or explanation which would definitely increase the quality of your work so uh, my advice is that the best cue to know when is the best time like, like for you to start is when you realize your friends, especially for those who are under the same supervision as yours, started. So uh, when, when you look at them and you know that they have started on your FIP, that's going to be your final cue. Like, like that's the part where you need to think, oh, I also need to start on my FIP. Um, I think that's all for my humble tips and sharing. Uh, I hope that it can be, it can help you in any ways. Um, also, I do not want to sugarcoat this, uh, but the journey to complete your FIP is gonna be very stressful and very uh, tiring and draining. But then, believe me, it's gonna be so rewarding knowing that you have put your whole soul into this this study so that's all from me and thank you doctor for this opportunities and bye good luck everyone uh, bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, my name is Muhammad Akib bin Osman and uh, I'm currently in my final year doing my FYP2 uh, under the supervision of Dr. Homang and today I've actually been tasked to do a video to record a video uh, about my experience doing FYP1 and give you some tips and advice on how to do it. So before I proceed with the video, I would like to uh, mention a few things. Uh, first of all, I am not the most qualified um, to talk about these things uh, because I've had uh, I've made some mistakes, uh, some uh, particular mistakes. Uh, however. Uh, I still think that it's my responsibility to tell you about those mistakes so that you wouldn't have to suffer just like I did before. Uh, the second thing is um, some of the points that I will be making might be redundant uh, because some of my colleagues are also making the same video and also some of the points that I will be making might be pointed out by uh, your supervisor and also uh, by the uh, FYP coordinator uh, during your uh, FYP1 briefing and all of that. So if you find that the points that I'm trying to make might be redundant or unhelpful for you, then you can just skip to those points and just go through the next point that I'll be making. And uh, also, I don't really like uh, the word tips and advice. So basically, I'm just trying to share with you uh, my experience throughout the journey throughout the one semester that I've been uh, making my FYP1. So the first advice, and I think this is actually quite important for you, is try to make an outline. Now, this is based on the mistake that I have made. 
because FYP1, what I've noticed is um, a very structured part of the FYP because uh, all of those things are honestly have already been um, predetermined. Uh, basically the structure of it, not the content that you will be writing because uh, your writing will be original to you. So you can't really copy all of those past researches. However, the outline or the structure of it, uh, how you're going to organize all of those things, uh, there are already plenty of researches that have been done before and you can just try to look at those researches and try to somewhat replicate the style or organization of it. But essentially, I'll try to summarize FYP1 to you and these are uh, some of the important things that have been very helpful to me. First of all, you have to choose your topic uh, or the work of interest. So for this one, uh, this is extremely important because you will be facing your FYP for one year, basically two semesters, FYP1 and also FYP2. So you'll be starting with FYP1. So you have uh, the research that you will be making should be the one that you are actually interested in so that you won't get bored when you are trying to write your FYP. Uh, but I have been made aware by my supervisor that for the batch uh, after me, the uh, batch 181 uh, afterwards basically, uh, the topic will be assigned by your supervisor so it might be helpful to uh, to you when uh, it is done this way because uh, you will be safe from the headaches of trying to choose the topic so um, however if you find that this style isn't really helpful to you or you find that uh, the topics that have been assigned to you um, you're not very familiar with the topic then you have to do a lot of reading because that is also important because when you are writing you have to actually know what you are writing about so uh, after that choose your framework now there are multiple frameworks. You have uh, feminism, postmodernism, modernism, and all of the stuff uh, that you have learned before in your other literature courses. So if you don't remember all of those things, please, I can't stress this enough, please read about it because you have to know the framework that you are adopting when you are doing your research. And try to actually distinguish between all of those uh, different theories or different frameworks because it will be very helpful to you to find one particular framework uh, that is relevant to your research so that you can, don't get it all mixed up when you are doing your research. Uh, and then next, after you've chosen your topic and you've also chosen the framework that you will use, you have to read the researches that are relevant to your topic. And you have to read a lot of it because uh, this will be very helpful to you. After you've read all of those things, try to identify the gaps, what have uh, not been studied. As I mentioned before, this research or your FYP is original to you because you'll be trying to create a new research. Even though this is just uh, an undergraduate level, the research has to be your research still, although it is appropriate to uh, our level. And after you've identified the research gap and everything, uh, try to identify the problem. So the problem is basically um, what you are trying to prove or what has not yet been proven. After you've identified that, uh, the problem, then you should know your argument. What is your argument or what your research is trying to prove? This is uh, another mistake that I have made when I was making my uh, when I was writing my FYP one. Because when you don't know what you are trying to prove, then you are basically writing blindly and it will impact your writing in a way that uh, your writing won't be consistent. You will point out things that are not relevant to your uh, argument and you will also point out uh, the organization of your research will also suffer because of it. So really try to identify what you are trying to prove with your research. And after you have identified uh, the argument, then next, you have to identify how you're going to prove your argument. And this will be helpful when you are trying to write your research question as well as objectives. Because those two things are basically um, the things that you will be proving. So really try to identify how you're going to analyze the things that you are proving in your research. The next one is um, you have to identify how your research will be relevant or the significance of your research basically there is a subsection in your FYP1 when you are writing about these things 
So uh, the mistakes that I've made in the past is that I overestimated um, the significance of my research. So even though uh, you might think that your research can do this and that, try to um, water it down uh, in a way. So try to really, uh, basically don't underestimate, don't overestimate, I'm sorry. Don't overestimate the significance of your research. Try to, uh, or try to do things that is appropriate for our level, which is the undergraduate, uh, undergraduate level. So it will save you the headache. Now, um, next, uh, I'll be telling you some tips about writing the literature review, which uh, for me, honestly, is uh, one of the hardest part of FYP1 because um, first of all, it is uh, considerably long and second of all, the style is quite uh, unique, I would say. So first, consult with your supervisor regarding uh, how to write a literature review. Uh, basically, this is just um, how to simplify it. Your literature review is the uh, summary of the relevant researches to the area of your research. Now, this is just uh, to simplify it. However, you have to really understand what the researcher is trying to point out in your researches and you have to only write the things that are relevant to you. You don't really have to uh, point out everything else in the research or the books that you have studied, but you have to point out the things that are relevant to you only. And next, um, okay, the next one is read and read a lot. This is also an important part of your literature review because um, you have to really understand it. So when it comes to my research in the past when I was doing my FYP1, uh, I have to read a lot of books and um, a lot of those books have like 500, 400 or 300 pages. So if you're going to read through all of those books, so for example, you have 15 uh, research or books in your literature review, and each of those books or researches uh, have like um, 300 pages, for example. So you will have to take a lot of time to read through all of those things. So to save you the trouble, first read a few books or researches that is particularly important for you or a very significant book, a fam famous book that talks about the author and uh, all of those things. Once you've actually read through all of it and you have digested uh, and you already have sort of like a foundation of knowledge, regarding your topic uh, only after that you can read through the other books and identify the chapters only the chapters that are important to you and then you can write the literature review uh, by doing that you can save a lot of time so you don't have to read the whole book for each books that you chose for your literature review so inshallah that will save you uh, a lot of time uh, the final advice before I uh, end this video is um, please uh, make a lot of consultations with your lecturer and this is a mistake that I'm currently making right now uh, as well as during my FYP1 because your lecturer is more knowledgeable compared to your friends so he will he or she will help you in the process of you writing your FYP1 so every time you feel confused or you have any question just refer to your lecturer uh, or your supervisor because uh, they will help you and and i think that's all for me uh yeah basically that's uh, it so i wish you all the best and may allah help you in writing your FYP1 and good luck assalamu alaikum Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Talia Iman Arisha Bindi Abdul Razak. My room number 1714304. So, I hope everyone is doing well and I want to thank the organizers of this short meeting, of this briefing, FYP briefing, Dr. Homam, Aina Baria, and to all of the students who joined this session. So, what am I doing today? I'm gonna explain to all of you how to write your FYP paper based on my experience because currently I'm doing my internship and recently I just submitted my paper for FYP that I wrote for two semesters okay so I made these mistakes so you don't have to so the first mistake I made is by choosing the wrong topic because initially I want so in order to write your FYP paper correctly, choose your topics wisely. 
So what do I mean by choosing your topics wisely is choose a topic that you can elaborate and expand the ideas like up to 30 or 40 pages because it is an FYP project, FYP paper that that you need to write based on certain requirements. So in order for you to be passionate and to write this paper for two semesters, you need to find the right topic for you that you can write for yourself and the right topic that your supervisors, supervisors can help to help you write the paper. So initially, so my topic for my FYP paper is the study of humor in T.S. Eliot's The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock and my topic is not that solid and the research is 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 not as easy as I thought it would be because it's just the study of humor in a poem so it's not that solid of solid of um, research so you need to find a topic that fits a topic that fits your interest and that you can expand it expand the idea the topic wisely in your paper so consult your supervisors ask your friends about what do you think about my topic okay and if you find the right topic for you then start writing so let me break it down for you the FYP project so okay the FYP paper is divided into six sections starting from introduction literature review methodology analysis discussion and finally the conclusion but it depends on how you write your paper so first of all make sure you follow the right format okay it doesn't okay the spacing is like 1.5 the spacing is 1.5 and it's up to you to use mla or apa based, but please consult your supervisors before doing so but make sure throughout the whole paper you use the same format okay that is important because format is important okay and second the organization of paper you need to have organization or solid organization in your paper don't just like write something about your paper and then you jump to another topic and expect the readers to understand because the readers don't like if you can't even understand your own paper how do you expect the readers to understand your paper so make sure you understand your paper and make sure the re readers anyone who read your paper can understand it well okay so that's why it is important for you to always consult your supervisors because that is the mistake i made before due to the pandemic it is difficult for us to see our supervisors face to face so use your whatsapp use your emails and consult your supervisors online because it can be done like that okay the next thing always consult your supervisors when you want to progress with your paper okay so the mistake that i made is i chose the wrong methodology for my paper and i had to like rewrite almost the whole chapter so i don't want you to make the same mistake so consult your supervisors about the right methodology that you have to use when you are conducting the research when you are writing your paper so there's a difference in writing like every paper will have different methodology based on the research that you have done like for linguistics you will have this kind of methodology for li for literature you will have this kind of methodology but it's not fixed it's, it depends on the topic that you want to research for so please consult your supervisors again and plan plan everything and do not do anything do not do anything at the very last minute because trust me you i I did that and it's hard for me to go but Alhamdulillah I did and I don't want any of you to go through that so please do not do anything last minute like it is an FYP project for two semesters so plan your time accordingly and it's okay sometimes we have like breakdowns sometimes we, stre we, we are stressed out so it's important for us to catch up to that lost time and write efficiently proficiently and please don't stress yourself out like talk to your friends talk to your supervisors um take your time to relax but don't relax too much that you forgot to write like, like you forget 
to write the paper don't do that okay okay so next okay okay so with dealing with supervisors you have to ask them what are the times they are free for meetings what are the times they are free for messaging or text like we have to respect their time too when we want to consult them okay and ask your friends to write i mean find a partner in your in your group of supervisors with the same supervisor i like find a partner that can read your paper like that can that can proofread your paper and and in exchange you proofread your paper like that helps a lot for me because i proofread my friend's paper and she did the same with my paper and we help each other because if my friend cannot understand my paper so i have to rewrite in a way that she could understand so that's how my paper gets better better and i did the same to her okay and i think that is all for me so remember to choose your topics wisely remember our organization consult your supervisors don't be too stressed out get help from other people from your friends from your supervisors from your families and take your time to think and plan your paper wisely so that is all for me thank you and i hope you succeed in writing your FAP paper. Thank you.